And if you hold your, your photograph over your palette, you should be able to see these colors, you know, in the area that you are trying to, uh, to recreate. Another thing that you can do is like, I, again, this is something that I did in the Joyce Hall workshop, I'm mixing colors. And like, what I did is I, I looked at this right here and I was thinking, you know, that's the colors that I'm seeing in the squirrel, the ultramarine blue and the burnt um, I can't really tell you the, the, you know, I always start with a small amount of a 50-50 ratio of each. I mix them together and from there I can tell if I need to add more blue or more, um, you know, burnt umber into it. But as you start mixing these two together and you get this nice, really uh, kind of a black blue color, almost like a painted gray, um, you start adding white to that and you get some really nice grays that to me matched up to what I was seeing in the squirrel. So that's how I ended up, you know, with the palette that I just showed you. Uh, why I came up with that particular color. Before I start is I need to blot this paint up a little bit so that it's not runny anymore. Let's make sure that it's fairly dry. Still try to kind of keep a little bit of my values in there. So again, as long as I've got a basic sketch to go by, uh, I'm uh, good to go. And I like to work from uh, dark to light whenever I'm painting. So we're gonna start, uh, this will start with the face, Let's kind of work our way outward. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this brush. This is a, a lot of times people ask me, what brush are you using, what size brush? Every brush is different, uh, depending on the brand that you This make. one is a number, probably, yeah, here we go. Number one, it's a Pro Stroke, uh, Prim & White Bristle. These are probably my favorite brushes to use. Uh, and no, I don't get paid to uh, to talk about it. It's just that's my favorite brush. I love working with it, and I haven't had any reason to change. I do have other brushes, but this is probably always my go-to. So I'm going to take the the mixture that I did of the uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I let's get a little bit of that up there along. The, top edge, kind of simu simulate that eye over there. I'm going to dry wipe my brush and from there I start seeing a lot more uh, browns. So I'm just going to dip into some of my just straight palette burnt umber. Get some on the side of that ear. Make each stroke count. You know, lay the brush stroke down, and as Joyce Hall would say, you leave it alone. Um, sometimes that's hard for me to do. I'm always a work in progress. I try to be better, but sometimes I fall back into bad habits. The main thing is, is to just keep painting. Don't let it stop you. So I dipped into a little bit of burnt sienna. I should probably pull out some yellow ochre. That's probably one of my favorite colors to use. Yeah, so I'm gonna be mixing a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm just dry wiping my brush as I go along. Mix a little yellow ochre with my burnt sienna. Just taking little short strokes. Try to emulate the, uh, the fur of the squirrel. There's a lot of that uh, that brown and gold color in the tail. You dry wipe it in a rag or paper towel. And just kind of come up here and work that in. Get a little bit light, so I'm going to dip into a little bit more burnt sienna. Again, I'm trying to lay my brush strokes down in the direction that I'm seeing the fur going. I probably started with more of a middle value right there because it's actually a little bit darker. So I'm going to dip back into that burnt umber and ultramarine blue mixture. And get the 
the dark color in there in the tail. And yes, I know that that's not going the correct direction. Uh, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of excess paint off of my brush and just kind of tap it to create a little bit of a blend without, I don't want to beat it to death, just want to get it a little bit blended right there. The two colors meet. And see how it's really nice and fuzzy looking there? You know, one of the things you can do is kind of push it outward like that. Realizing, realizing that, that you know we are going to have to paint some snow, so we'll be creating some really nice light effects in a few minutes. In fact, I'm going to wait before I do any of these up here because those really get thin. 